Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 14th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be adding some sound effects, a thud, a stumble, a camera shake and some fading out when we collide with an object to give our level a bit more immersion. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, so far, we have the ability to hit an object, stop running, and stumble backwards. That's great, but let's add a bit more immersion to this game. The idea of what I want to try and achieve by the end of this tutorial is Timmy running into something, we hear a thud, and then we hear the stumble backwards sound, you know, fall into the floor. As long, uh, you know, as long as we have a camera shake when we hit the actual object as well to give it that oomph kind of feel. And then a fade out into black, which will, you know, eventually show us our results and take us back to the main menu. So going to the canvas, all we have so far are two little things, which are the coin back and the coin count. Let's first add in a fade screen so we can kind of fade from all of our game into black. And that's really easy to achieve. If we go to game object and go to UI and then go to raw image, uh, we can then take this raw image and name it as fade out. Next thing, we need to set the position uh, as stretch. So set your anchor position right here, stretch it across the screen. And then set the left as zero, top as zero, right as zero, bottom as zero. And what that will do is it will stretch it across the entire screen. Hence, that's why it is completely white right now. What that means is that we then have to change the color to black so we can change it right there. And finally, the idea of making a fading screen all revolves around the alpha, which is this down here. It's currently set as 255, which means it is completely opaque. Zero means it is completely transparent, and anything in between is translucent. You can hold your mouse button down, and you should be able to see it just here, how see-through it can be. We need to set it as zero. So how do we make this fade to black? Well, it's really, really easy. We need to use some animation. Uh, we've not used animation per se in this series yet, although we do have the coins animating via script. We need to do animation a little differently in this tutorial. So firstly, let's make sure we're in our assets folder here. Let's right click and create a new folder. We'll call this animations. And in this animations folder, we need to make sure that we do are, we are, are actually in there. Otherwise, your animation file can end up somewhere it shouldn't. Next, we need to click on fade out. And down here, we need to click on animation. And here, make sure uh, you do have add tab and animation just there if you do indeed need it. As I said, we dealt with a little bit of animation before, like controlling it and rotating coins here. Um, so if you remember when we did with Timmy, when he hits, we, he changes animation. But here we're actually creating the animation. So when you're here, click on Create, and we'll say Fade Out. And you'll have this appear. This is our animation bar. This is a way of creating simple animations in Unity. We just need to press the record button up here and set the first keyframe. What is a keyframe? It is any point in the animation that is controllable by us. So for example, what that means is the very first keyframe, we want our fade out screen to be completely see-through. So we need to make sure that here on the color, rather than say, 255, it says zero. So you may need to retype 255 and then type zero or type one, then zero. As long as it says zero here and you have these two little icons there, that means the keyframe is set. Next, we need to establish how quickly do we want the fade out to occur. I think three seconds is a nice fade out time. As we're working in 60 frames a second, we go to frame 180. Now, what do we do? Well, we set our keyframe as completely opaque, so we can change the alpha to 255. And what that will do is over the course of three seconds, it will go from zero to 255, hence giving the illusion of an animated fade out. Uh, we can then click the X there 
we can then press the record button once again, head back to the project window, and you'll have these two icons here. This one is the animation, and this one is the controller for the animation. We need this one. Over here where it says loop time, make sure that's unticked. I want to press play now just to make sure that the animation for fading out works. And it does. Excellent. So that animation is going to fade out whenever we trigger that. So to do that, we need to make sure that fade out is unticked. It then means that we can play our game without fade out actually happening. So what Timmy did there, that's where we're going to continue this tutorial and make sure that we have the right sound effect and the right animation and the right script in place. So let's go to that cube. Uh, scroll down and let's go to our collision detect. And if you remember, this is just a very simple script that stops Timmy running, turns his animation to the stumble backwards. So how do we make it so as we have a thud? Well, that's really easy. Let's add the variable, then let's add our asset, let's place our asset and then get it all working. So serialize field, and it's going to be audio source, capital A, capital S. I will call it collision FX, semicolon. And to trigger that, we just need to go to void on trigger enter and say collision FX dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon. And let's save that script for now. So. Let's head back into Unity. And we need to import that effect. So when it's had a bit of a think, compiling everything, let's go to our effects folder. And I'm going to import this collision sound effect. And you can get this in the pinned comment if you click the link in there. And it'll also be in the description. You can download this for free. So in our effects section of our game, which if I can remember where it is, I think it's in level controls, audio, effects. Let's hold control, press D on coin collect, and let's drag and drop collision onto there. And what that will do is it will hold that collision sound for us, ready for when we want to trigger it. So let's change the name of this to collision FX. And on the cube itself, let's add that collision effects in there now. So let's drag and drop. I know there's other objects which would require it, but we don't need to worry about them too much for now. Let's get the main script in place. So now let's press play. And what this will do is it will give the illusion of a thud as soon as Timmy hits it and a stumble. Perfect. So that audio has the sound of Timmy's hitting something and the stumble backwards sound. Now what we need to do is let's animate the camera to give it even more immersion. So I want it to kind of um, jolt back and forth for you know a, a half a second to kind of give that illusion of, oh, we've hit something. So let's go to our camera, which is on Timmy, main camera. Let's go to our animations folder. And much like we did last time, let's go to animation, create. And now we need to have this as collision, if I can spell collision right, cam. And let's press play. And let's start by setting our position. So the position we're going to use is on the, uh, not the X, it'd be the Y and the Z. So currently it's set as 2.08 and 0, 2.85. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you're in the first frame, which is 0 and set this as 2.08 or whatever your Y axis is currently set at. And the same with the Z, minus 2.85. So if yours is minus 6.10, then you change it to minus 6.10. We just need that first keyframe to be the exact same as what the camera is. Now what I want to do is I want to create an animation to make it jolt forward very quickly. So I'm gonna to go to frame five, and then I'm going to drag it forward to about there. And then I'm going to go to frame 10. I'm going to bring it backwards to there. Frame 15, bring it forwards a little bit. Frame 20, bring it backwards a little bit. 
frame 25 forwards a bit and then frame 30 backwards just a little bit. Uh, let's press the record button to stop that. Let's go to project and same as we did last time, let's go to collision cam, turn off loop time. Now this bit isn't quite done yet, I just want to see what the animation will look like. It should hopefully jump forward and backwards. Yes, perfect. So we now need to trigger that animation only when Timmy collides with something. And that means going to the main camera and going to animator. So if you, did we, I can't remember if we did this last time. Um, but essentially what we need to do is we need to prevent the actual collision cam animation occurring all the time. And what we need to do is just right click, or go to create state, empty, and right click on new state and set as default. And I, th I think generally you can uh, double click like on these as well and it will take you to the animator. So if you do need to, if you've lost your animator tab, you can just click on the controller and it will take you to it. Uh, so by default, new state is the current animation and it will remain the current animation. And that's fine, absolutely fine. Perfect. So how do we get this all to trigger together to make it all make sense? Well, that can all be done in that script that we were in before. So let's go to the collision to text script. And now let's add in uh, the main camera. So serialize field. And this will be a game object. And we'll call it uh, just main cam. Next thing we need to do is add in the fade out screen. So serialize field and game object, and we'll call it fade out. Now, to get this all working together, we are going to now need to create something known. Uh, it's not a method as we've done with void on trigger enter. We actually need to use a coroutine. Um, the reason why we have to use a coroutine is because we're now going to use some timing to actually change what happens in our scene. Uh, that cannot be done inside a method, it has to be a coroutine. So let's start by creating our coroutine. And we'll say I enumerator, uh, we'll call it collision end. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now it will underline red as you start. The reason being is because we don't have any timing inside this coroutine and timing has to be inside otherwise it's not going to work properly. What we are going to do is we're going to take everything we've written inside void on trigger enter, we're going to cut it out of there and place it in the collision end. Next what we need to do is we need to say main cam dot get component and in spiky brackets animator Oh, close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of the animation that we created for that camera so that'll be collision cam and then semicolon and then underneath we now need to wait for a couple of seconds before we decide that we're going to display our fade out so we can say yield return new wait for seconds and i'm going to say let's say three seconds and then we'll see how the timing works on that and as you type that you'll see that the collision end section disappears which is good so the next thing we need to do is add the fade out screen to occur so fade out dot set active and in brackets true and the final thing we need to do is to make sure that all of this triggers together so in the void on trigger enter where we removed our lines of code, we need to add in just one line of code and that is start coroutine and in brackets, the name of the coroutine that we've just written here, which is collision end, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and save. And if you have problems with this script, I will also upload this uh, and you can download it for free along with the um, sound effect that we imported earlier. So next thing we need to do is head back into Unity and make sure that it should work as intended. So we'll need to add 
some more variables just here. So the main camera is on there. And then fade out, we just need to add to there. So this should hopefully work. Um, when it does, we'll then add this to the rest of any object that has a collider on it. So ready, we should. And it should fade out. Perfect. Excellent. So I'm happy with how that's now coming together. We've got that immersion in place. You could fade out faster. You could do it sooner. It's entirely up to you. Uh, you will notice around the edge that we do. You can still see the game through. That is just a feature. A feature of inside the engine. When we build the game itself, that will not actually happen. You'll find a lot of things like that occur inside the engine, but not when the game's actually built itself. So realistically, we now need to uh, add that to some other game objects, i.e., you know, everything we can possibly collide with. Uh, I'm going to add it just to these two for now so we can see that it works on different objects, but I'm not going to apply it to everything just yet. I'll leave you to kind of work that on your own. There's no point in me wasting your time. Uh, but all that essentially means is that um, you can select all the game objects that require the extra variables. Like I've got two selected here. You know, we did it last time and I can just drag and drop the collision onto there, fade out onto there and the main camera, if I can find it, where's it gone? There it is, onto there. So now one more test. We should be able to crash into, let's do the rock and we should have the same effect happen. Perfect. And it, it started fading out there as I stopped the gameplay. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is I think we're going to create a kind of a main menu hub so we can start looping this around. So you can do your run and when you hit something, you come back to the main menu and then you can start again. So I want to get the game loop going at this point. So yeah, a main menu hub kind of thing is coming up in the next tutorial. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every video still to come in this series. And I'll see you next time.